And so I think that it's really important, even after you kind of get out of an academic setting, to say what you think and always be ready to kind of put out your vision for uh, the world. Because if you don't, I think it's very easy to get stuck in frames that don't work. And it's only when people are willing to express kind of alternative views that we can get much quicker to answers that can solve problems. Um, so I know that's been uh, kind of all over the uh, spectrum. But um, I, uh, I, I think the, the basic idea is that we are living in a very interconnected world. And everything that we do in terms of our jobs and businesses and everything that we do in terms of our morals um, is embedded in this global marketplace. And so in order to succeed, you have to think globally, and you also have to really be ready to find uncommon allies and places to show your passion. And I think if you do that, you'll end up uh, really being a part of what is a very exciting youth social change movement that uh, you all have seen in a lot of places and that I think is growing quickly uh, since uh, we started our work about five years ago. Um, and with that said, I think I'm really happy to uh, hear more about your thoughts and then answer any questions that you guys may have. Um, you spoke about a mentor being very important to each person, that you need someone to help you give you ideas. Was there anyone like special or specific that gave you like that mentoring that you needed? Yeah, um, so there were a couple people. Uh, so when we were starting uh, our organization, uh, we uh, were hoping to recruit funding. And uh, there was um, one woman at uh, the Rockefeller Brothers Club um, who decided that she would take a real interest in what we were doing. And this was, um, I, I should uh, say that we approached everyone we did is we used every possible connection. So, you know, I looked up um, the trustees at my um, university because I was just finishing uh, school and we were getting started. And uh, we looked up um, anyone that was an alumni. And so we really tried like every possible lead. And so finally one person, you know, really uh, agreed with what we were doing. And essentially, um, I think that what she did is she um, gave us uh, the confidence um, to keep going and to keep kind of uh, applying to a lot of the other places. And the other thing that I think that she did is that she was very kind of clear about what we needed to do. So we had never been to the foundation world before, and they operate very differently than um, one might say a kind of normal world. Uh, and so they're very into kind of abstract frameworks. And they really like these kind of ideas and kind of PowerPoint solutions, but they're less concerned with kind of like, you know, let's say um, uh, actual impact or numbers or I can't quite describe it. But there's a specific kind of framework that they use to evaluate um, a lot of uh, their grant making. And so the result was that um, she really helped us in thinking through uh, what we needed. And we couldn't have done that on our own because it's just something where, you know, in a lot of uh, places, uh, there's kind of like an apprentice relationship, and you can only learn from the people that are doing. And so that was an example where, one, she was incredibly valuable and kind of very confident, but two, she gave us that kind of apprentice knowledge. Yeah, great. If um, anyone's interested in um, being a part of your organization, how would they go about that? Sure. Um, so, uh, one, I think they can sign up So <laughs> I was going to try to steal it. Um, <laughs> Why didn't you take a sheet and relax? <laughs> well, isn't that right? Well, they can sign up on there, I guess. Uh, but the, the easiest way is go to aidemocracy.org, um, press on the Join Aid uh, box, and then uh, you can fill out an online form. And uh, when you submit it, you'll be getting all sorts of emails about the different campaigns that you can join. How do you actually 
take your ideas, you know, you can change the frame, fine. You can, you know, be abstract, have PowerPoint presentations, but how do you actually go into the ground on the field and make a difference? And so, I mean, he was offering me suggestions in different areas, but I want to know from you, like, where did you start? How did you actually go, you know, which communities did you pick? Uh, which people did you choose to go to? I mean, how, what, was your, what was the perspective of it? Sure. Um, so, uh, first, uh, is everyone here familiar with kind of social innovation and social entrepreneurship? Are those some of the new terms? Who, who's familiar? We'll, uh, we'll see. Okay, just a, a, a few. So, um, social innovation and entrepreneurship, which are kind of interchangeable terms, is a term referring to the intersection of business acumen and social change. And it's essentially using market ideas uh, to uh, make a social impact. So an example would be community banking or micro loans, um, where uh, you are not going to profit very much from loans of $100 to, uh, let's say, uh, poor farmers in a part of Bangladesh. Um, so your goal wouldn't be to actually make money, uh, but you'll make enough so that you can get your money back and then loan it to someone else. And so you act like a bank, only you're not motivated by profit, you're motivated by the social impact because when you start to create loans, it gives credit to people who otherwise wouldn't be able to build up a livelihood. And so by having this credit and constant flux among people that otherwise wouldn't have access, you're creating a huge social change movement. And so it's using the best of kind of economics uh, for the best social impact. Um, and uh, I just want to answer this and then uh, I'll definitely come to yours. Um, so in terms of how we kind of went about our change process, um, we really thought about our work in terms of a generational movement. And um, we sat down and we thought a lot about um, what the key problem that we were trying to solve was. And it was definitely um, American ignorance of the rest of the world and its consequences in terms of unilateral policies. And then we really thought about how we can create a model to address that. And so there's two pieces to that. Um, the model has a target community and then it has a target action. So the target community for us initially was Americans abroad. And the reason was that this was a group that didn't have a lot of competition. Uh, because most students, when they are on campus, they're constantly being barraged by, we want you to join this campaign or be involved with this group. Um, what happens when you go abroad is that you're not in the usual scene because you're on a foreign campus. And frankly, most overseas campuses don't have the extracurricular lifestyle. So the result is that we had this community that was very interconnected, um, really got the idea of bringing the world home, and that didn't have a lot of competition. Uh, so we were able to go with a unique ask and be the only ones essentially giving them an extracurricular opportunity. And so we would bring together from the start hundreds of Americans abroad uh, to learn about how they could use these skills when they got back. And the nice thing is a lot of them were junior year abroad. They wanted to be involved in the campus life when they got back during their senior year. But because they weren't here, let's say, when they would be going up for elections their junior year, they wouldn't have a natural affiliation with the club. And so they would bring this club back with them, and that would kind of serve as a way for them to engage. So they were a target because they were a great fit with what we wanted them to do, and it was a great fit for them to do what we were hoping. And then on the uh, model side, uh, we essentially created what would be called a franchise-based growth strategy. Uh, we had a very kind of clear toolkit. Um, where uh, you guys can see this at AIDemocracy.org, you know, hosting a meeting or a video conference. Is, there are all sorts of very user-friendly uh, templates that you can use to bring the world home. And whether it's um, hosting an interfaith dialogue or a video screening or uh, getting your university to divest from Darfur or uh, become a more green uh, player on energy issues, it makes it very easy. And so that was kind of our initial thinking. Um, what's the problem? Uh, who is the solution and what do they do? And then putting that together and getting funding for it and all of those things uh, you know, became the big challenge 